So hi everyone and welcome to a continuation and the start of our lecture in uh, financial decision making under conditions of certainty uh, in the course of financial economics. So if you recall in the last video, we discussed different financial instruments that we could uh, typically encounter. And uh, these are typically your equity securities, your bonds, uh, and uh, your derivative securities. And we said that the course would primarily deal with the context of equities and uh, bonds. So um, since we now know a brief overview of the entire financial system, what are the different financial securities that people could opt to buy or could opt to invest in? And the goal of the consumer, which is to smooth out their consumption over time and to mitigate risk because people are inherently, are inherently risk averse. So we're now going to start to tackle those sort of behavioral things in a more mathematical light. Uh, and we're going to start formally our discussion on financial decision making under certainty. So the particular model that we're going to use in both the discussions of uh, financial decision making under certainty and under uncertainty would be the Fisher model. And under the Fisher model, there's this belief that every consumer uh, with, in this regard, with regards to certainty, every consumer lives in a world of certainty. And of course, we all know that that's probably not realistic or that is not realistic because many things in life are uncertain or are very random. But uh, the Fisher model will enable us a very convenient and a very concise way about trying to uh, sort of uh, relay our thoughts on how a consumer would behave given uh, now that they are allowed to access financial markets and capital markets. So under the Fisher model, every consumer lives in a world of certainty. And there are only two points in time, i.e. there are only two time periods. You live one period, you die another. Okay, so it's quite of a, a gruesome assumption, but that's essentially the model. So there are only two points in time that are important, which are today, which is the present, and tomorrow, which is the future. And the beginning of the first period we denote as t equal to zero, and the beginning of the second period we denote as t equal to one. Another key assumption we're gonna make with the Fisher model in the context of financial decision-making under certainty is that the capital markets are perfect in nature. By well, what do we mean when we say perfect capital markets? It just simply means that there are many agents in the capital market and no clear, no one agent has a clear advantage over another uh, agent in, in a manner that they can affect the foregoing market price and the interest rates. So in essence, uh, the, the, a perfect capital market is a perfectly competitive capital market. Another one is that there is no information asymmetry present. That is, every participant has the same information about market prices and that there are no transaction costs, no barriers other than the prevailing interest rate. So that's the structure of the Fisher model. And we're gonna use that sort of structure to frame our discussions under this chapter of financial decision-making under certainty. So, uh, the objective of the consumer, as we've said uh, in the past videos, is to smooth out consumption. But how do we really measure consumption? Well, we, we sort of uh, measure it in this concept called cons uh, consumption streams. And we say that a consumer must choose one out of many possible consumption streams. In this case, lifetime consumption streams, because we're dealing with more than one period. And in a lifetime consumption stream, a lifetime consumption stream is a sequence of time-dated consumption. That means you have a consumption for the present and you have a consumption for the future. In particular, we denote C0 as the consumption in the present or what we can refer to as the standard of living or the consumption level in the present. Well, we have C1, which is the standard of living in the future or the, uh, the consumption level in the future, what you choose to consume in, in units of currency in the future. So that's C0 and C1. These are your life, uh, these are consumption streams that you could have, okay? Now, a consumer, like your typical micro theory, because of course, financial economics is heavily grounded on micro, 
has to adhere to our typical axioms of consumer behavior. But uh, in discussing uh, the axioms of consumer behavior, instead of dealing with mere goods, we deal with the lifetime consumption streams. We deal with C0 and C1, right? So the first axiom is completeness, right? And in essence, completeness just states that the consumer is able to choose between different alternative consumption streams. That is, if he or she were presented with two particular consumption streams, two options, he or she would be able to rank and to choose which one he or she prefers or is indifferent to. So that is, a consumer can compare one pair of a lifetime consumption stream. So one pair which contains consumption today, consumption tomorrow, versus another pair which also contains consumption today and consumption tomorrow. Those values will certainly differ and may differ, right? And uh, the consumer can say which of these two states or which of these two streams is more preferred. Okay, so it's either the first stream is preferred to another stream, so that C not not and C one not is preferred to C not one and C not uh, and C one one, or the other way around. So the second bundle is preferred. For, the second stream is preferred to the first stream. Another option is a uh, consumer could be indifferent between the two streams, like uh, in typical micro consumer behavior. He or she may not have a preference and may opt to say, okay, I'm good with either. So that's another uh, sort of decision or preference that the consumer could opt to take. Now, the next uh, axiom, uh, as we're familiar with in micro, is transitivity. And that just says, um, implies that for any, say, three or more given consumption streams, if you uh, prefer the first to the second consumption stream, and you prefer the second to the third consumption stream, by transitivity, it means that you prefer the first over the third. Because, of course, you prefer the second over the third, but you prefer the first over the second. So you also prefer the first over the third. So there's just this consistency that's in there. And another assumption, actually, not necessarily part of transitivity, is uh, our assumption of non-satiation. And when we deal with non-satiation, we say that a consumer will always prefer more consumption. So if the consumer can get a higher consumption today, none less of the consumption tomorrow, as a ceteris paribus consumption tomorrow, he or she would be much happier, right? None less of the other, just today. The same goes with the future, none less of today. So a consumer will always want higher levels of consumption than lower levels of consumption. And this just implies that the consumer prefers higher standards of living than lower standards of living. And that makes sense. I wouldn't want to have a lower standard of living than my standard of living now. I would always want a higher standard of living. And if I were given the option to keep my standard of living or have a higher standard of living, I would go with the higher standard of living because that just makes sense, right? That's, that's how an economist sort of thinks. We would always want a higher level of satisfaction. A consumer thinks rather, that's how they would sort of uh, how, quantify their happiness or their utility, right? In this case, we're gonna measure this over utility function uh, later on. So the last, uh, well, one of the last assumptions or axioms that we have on consumer preferences is the assumption of, um, is the assumption of what we call strict convexity, right? And this just says that any average of two equally satisfactory different consumption streams, so say you have two consumption streams with two different present and future consumptions, any average of those consumption streams is preferred than any of the other two. Right? So a consumer would prefer, as in micro theory, averages to extreme. Right? So an individual, uh, in theoretically, when we're going to deal with this in financial economics, an individual prefers an average or a smooth consumption standard to extreme standards over, over the lifetime. What does that mean? If you were a person, you would want a good standard of living in today and possibly a slightly better standard of living in the future you would opt to try and save right today for your future. And uh, if you would want, you would opt to borrow today as well. Say you need financing needs to be able to um, satisfy yourself today and have enough money tomorrow to pay it back. You wouldn't want to just spend all that you have today, right? So you wouldn't spend all of your income today. Uh, you would want to save part of it or at least borrow part of your income. And you wouldn't want to sort of uh, leave nothing for the future. You would want something there as well. So uh, you shouldn't starve on any one of the two periods, whether that be present or future. 
So you want a smooth consumption standard over time. And the consumer will choose the most preferred consumption stream among those that are attainable. And generally, that's the consumption stream that's most affordable while reaching its goals, right? While reaching its goals. Now, in the next video, we're going to be discussing about how a consumer can sort of, how we sort of represent these, these uh, axioms of preferences. But now, instead of uh, it being goods, as we said, it's going to be with respect to consumption streams in the present and in the future. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this very uh, quick and simple video on the axioms of preferences and an introduction to the Fisher model and our discussion on financial decision making under certainty. And in the next video, we're going to take a deeper dive on how exactly we measure uh, the satisfaction of a consumer on these consumption streams. So again, thank you for your attention, and I'll see you in the next video.